I think for most people, the key thing toward ongoing mental health is to have ways to reset quickly when we find ourselves sleep deprived, lacking sunlight, movement, nutrition, hydration, social connection, et cetera. And I, I see two or at least two behavioral practices that are very good for that. Um, the first one is having some practice that allows you to do what's what I call deliberate decompression to, to let this, the valve off of stress. Okay. Um, in order to get better sleep, but also just to release some of the stress in a healthy, non-destructive way, non-destructive to you, non-destructive to other people, you know, because there are destructive ways of relieving stress, right? I would argue without, um, you know, I'm not a teetotaler or anything, but I would argue that using alcohol or any other substance to control your stress is, is not the best way. Um, that's a, you know, I'm not going to cast judgment on whether or not people rely on those things, but it's certainly not the best way because it's not coming directly from you. It's not an ability. It's an access to something. So deliberate decompression is some behavioral practice that allows you to reset to those uh, critical five things. Um, I've talked endlessly on the internet about NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. And one of the reasons I coined that acronym is because I don't care or have any stake in whether or not that non-sleep deep rest is NSDR. You can find zero cost NSDR scripts online. Made for has one on YouTube. There are now many of them out there. Uh, whether or not you do yoga nidra, whether or not you do a breathing practice that involves mostly you know longer exhales, whether or not you decide to do meditation, whether or not you decide to get that from a quiet walk, or you know it doesn't or, or cooking, whatever relaxes you, right? A deliberate decompression from the stress. I think is critical to have. And then the other one, which the science also supports is having a practice of gratitude, finding something that you're grateful for um, and both giving and receiving gratitude. Now, why are like, these are basic things, right? Sleep, gratitude, et cetera. But why is it important to have these ways to reset when you're impaired? Well, first of all, I should just mention that no one should expect themselves to incorporate these practices and have them work if you haven't already practiced them in advance of the stressful episode, right? The, we, the best time to learn a tool is when you don't need that tool. Um, you know, if, you, if you've never, I don't recommend you doing this unless you can do it on a track or with a driver. It's kind of fun to do. Years ago, I took this like for fun. I took this tactical driving course. And it's like you, you learn how to drive really fast toward a cyclone fence and then slam on the brakes. It's something that most people, you never want to have to do this in the real world, right? But you experience what it's like to get tossed forward against your seatbelt, like it is a heart, you know, and get pushed forward. It's, it's, a, it's an experience that you can, it has to be felt, right? Um, but it's great because if you have to have to break hard uh, in the real world, it, you know what that's like. You've driven there, right? You've been there. And I would say these things like deliberate decompression that you do on a daily basis or maybe every other day or so are a practice for those kinds of events in life when you need to let steam out of the valve or recover sleep that you've lacked the night before because some real life event came in. And the expect you can't expect yourself to learn how to just shed stress from a breathing exercise having never done it before, right? So, and there are a number of examples. Pat and I earlier were talking about because he's a former Navy SEAL and we've done some scuba diving together. Um, you know, you never want to have to do the emergency share air scuba diving thing without having learned it in the, the training, which allows you to actually get licensed to scuba dive. Um, and I've actually had the not fortunate experience of having to do that as a real emergency. Pat was on that trip. And so it, it was a terrible situation really, but made okay, made all okay, frankly, by the fact that that, that process was just reflexive at that point. So I would say that deliberate decompression, NSDR, or, or things like it are, need to be practiced at least every other day or three times a week minimum so that when you're sleep deprived, you can do that. Um, and gratitude practices are useful in their own right as well. They generate, we know, positive neurotransmitters, the serotonin system in particular. Being able to tap into that as a source for reset is extremely valuable. It's also valuable to do in its own right, as I just mentioned. And how do you get good at these practices? By doing them when you don't need them. 